Shemata, the Holy Spirit through Daniel had already stated how that the completion of the seven years would take place. But we hear, we see where his sanity has returned to him. Upon the return of his sanity, we find he is repenting. He is giving glory to God. Thank the Lord he come to his senses. If he had come to it back before and ever, Daniel witnessed to him. He would not have went through this period of time, this seven years in his life. We put ourselves through stuff. Hey, and I'm, I'm sad and I'm guilty. I know you're all innocent. I see halos going everywhere. But we do things that we create our own problems. We create sometimes our own situations and difficulties. But we have to stay faithful to God through it all. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me give you these and, and we're going to, then we're going to elaborate just a little bit. We're going to quit. Okay. Verse 36 is that at the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. As the kingdom was taken away, it's now restored. God allowed it. Actually, one of the functions of the Holy Spirit, I want you to note this, is restoration. Though it has been lost in some Someone's been in that situation. They've known God. They've fell away from God. They can still be restored. Amen. Likewise, America can still be restored if they would just turn their heart and call upon the Lord and get some godly people in leadership positions. Verse 37, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways, judgment, and those who walk in pride, he is able to abase. That word abase means to bring down or to submit and to humble. means to humble. Before his insanity, he, he did not praise or he did not give praise and glory unto the Lord God Almighty at all. But now, that's all Nebuchadnezzar is doing. He is praising God giving God the praise that he is the almighty God, giving him honor, glory, and peace. Isn't that an awesome chapter? What an awesome, awesome chapter. What guidelines it is as examples and references that is going and that is in that through that. Uh, I, I want to hear from you. If you have something you want to share. If you don't, then hey, we'll go home, okay? But uh, uh, the thing that, that, that stands out in my mind, it, it is not the fact that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was like an animal for seven years. But that he was there and had to endure that for seven years. Seven years. Did, did, you, did you ever even second think about that? Seven years. He was out there in the, in the fields and the opens like a wild animal. That's where he was. You know, I think if God done that to me, I, I think I'd be, I'd be awakened in a week. I'd think six months, a year, seven years. But didn't this something just hit me? I wonder if that's why maybe God is allowing things to happen and transpire as they are. It's his patience to people that they'll finally reach out to him sooner or later, seeing the things that are happening and unfolding. And you'd have to be blind in one eye, can't see out of the other, or your head dipped in the sand if you don't realize what's happening in our nation and in our world today. But it's God's mercy. How long is he going to allow it to happen? How long has he allowed this to take place? 1973. Abortion, they made that legal. How do you make murdering an innocent child in the womb legal? There was ways to take care of that without doing such an extraordinary thing. And what are we doing today? And I'm fixing to hush, but what it does, it just leads on and on and on. And what we're seeing and we're reaping them, a lot of those things right now to where that they have legalized, I'm sure you know this, they've legalized that after a baby has been born, 
There's nothing wrong with a baby. They have legal life. If they want to take the baby's life, they can do it now. They have a time period after it's born. Not right after it's born, for a time period after it's born. Is that not unreal? But it lets you say, now that was since 1973. So I'm simply saying, I know that may be a little bit opposite as far as the extraordinary when you think about Daniel and his uh, being like an animal for seven years. Uh, but it's also God saying in his mercies, uh, he tries to bring man to, his, to the awareness of who he is. If they just do it, okay, I'm going to hush. I, I don't, don't want to belabor that too much, but I, I think you grasped. I think you grasped what I was uh, alluding to you and relating to you. Any questions or comments in? Okay. Praise the Lord. Might have been his what? Finish. Oh, his finish? Sentence. No. no. Repentance. Brother Don, I'm just deaf in one ear and can't hear out of the other, okay? <laughs> but it, it took that long for the penance to be able to take place. But go ahead. Seven is referred to a, quite a few times through the Bible. Yes. That's God's perfect number. Yes. Seven years of penance for what Nebuchadnezzar has already done short time. Hmm. It's a whole lot shorter than eternity. Good point. Good point. Amen. It was through that process of time. And it is seven. I'm telling you, seven is God's number. That's all it is to it. Proves it over and over again. And he knew what it was going to take for Nebuchadnezzar. If he had stopped at six years, old Neb might have done something different. You just can't ever tell. But God, he just knows it. He knows it's better than we know ourselves. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, amen. Yes. Let her give you, let, let her put that thing in front of your mouth. You think? <laughs> it didn't bite you. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Yes. Oh, wow, you're getting personal now. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Sister Dean. Appreciate that very much. We, and... There is no doubt about that in our, uh, in our board meeting we had just this past uh, Monday morning. There was the reaffirming of that from myself and also the deacons that we believe without doubt. I have no doubt that God was not in that me coming or I wouldn't be here. I promise you. But now I'm not going to stay a long time now. I just want you to, but I love you and I'd like to. you like to, but uh, I'm just... I'm just not the man I used to be is all it is to it. <laughs> I don't know how I can put it, but uh, at any rate, I appreciate that very much, Sister Dean. Thank you. Thank you. Liquid sunshine. Yes. Amen. Yeah, Brother Jerry. <laughs> Somebody might throw a book at you. Ah. Uh. Okay, well, sure. Verse 7. Verse 7? Yep. Okay. And, and let's dissect it a little bit. Okay. Read it. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Galdeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Could they have been too afraid to? I don't really think so, but it says they did not make it. It didn't say they could not. It said they did not. 
I hadn't noticed that. That's, that's a good point. But I don't think they did because of the depth of the dream, like you said. No, but there was also, like you said, it was the fear. If they had a saw that, I think there'd been a greater fear in them to be able to relate that well, as well. Nisar even told him, go ahead and interpret it. Yeah, sure like did. Maybe he was, he was kind of afraid to interpret it too. But Nebuchadnezzar said, go ahead and interpret it. He's telling tell me just like it is. He sure did. But I do believe it the way you you said it. Yeah. I think that's the way. But that is a good point. I like to look at the dream. You bet you. You bet you. But that is a good point because, man, if, hey, if Daniel was that way for an hour, that lets you know that was something, ooh, I don't know about this, you know. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar, could have got, he could have got mad as a hornet and he could have had one of his soldiers over the and said, kill him, I don't care if he is a second man in the kingdom, you know, something like that. But, uh, uh, do that, you have me tied on the railroad track. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hours Nebuchadnezzar had. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But yeah, we're on the same page, old brother Jerry. That's, that's a very good point, though. Very good point. Amen. Do you, and to add a little bit more to that, do you think that might be why that there are some godly people, I'm trying to say godly people now, a limit in the godly part, that will not go ahead and do what they know they should do? Because they're too much reserved in it and they don't have full trust and confidence that God's going to take care of it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what. And you, you've been in the same area. Uh, and I'll use this one. I'll use him because you'll know. C.L. Haston. Brother Haston ha has shared some things with me while they were on that mission field. I'm going to tell you what. I told him timing. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm glad God didn't call me to be an old missionary. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what. Whenever there are known demons sitting up in trees, and you know they're there, and just the other thing. Anyway, it just lets you see. Boy, you've got to be called of God. And if you're called of God, then you can do it. Then you can do it. But you're not exempt from the devastations or the tragedies that could take place. Go ahead. Hmm. Good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that would be our attitude. Exactly. So true. Good point, Brother Donald. Good point. I could see where Nebuchadnezzar would have been getting a little concerned and come on down. I know you've been doing it. Mm -hmm. Because you believe in God and God also sees you coming. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Yeah, he knew he knew it. That's, that's, and also, you could see by the scripture, by him saying he was a stone, you could tell that Nebuchadnezzar see in his countenance that Daniel's countenance was even changed. You know, it's like some of us, we get turned on to God, we look different. <laughs> Amen. Good point. Yes. Talking about Nebuchadnezzar being the great, great man. He was a great, great man. He had the kingdom like you talked about, of the walled cities, everything. And God didn't just, you know, remove the kingdom from him, but he put him to about the lowest level. Ain't that, that the truth? Go to. Yes. And it was just, I don't know, you know, you wonder what went through Daniel's mind. You know, can this really be what you what you're saying, God, is this the interpretation, or is he going to kill me when I tell him, or right. if this is just so profound that it, you know, he had to wrap his own mind around it, maybe. Amen. That was, from, that was part of it that I was, uh, that I was alluding to earlier from my statement, that that's what I thought. You know, that, no doubt that had to go through Daniel's mind, because he's a human. So, uh, 
it's very, very sensible that that could have, could have been going through his mind. Something else. Can you imagine even when you think about, when you think about the dream he had had 15 years earlier, the interpretation he had gave it, Daniel thinking about that, and now he's giving him this, and he knows he's talking about old Neb himself. You know, that would make you very cautious, very cautious. Because, hey, the fire furnace wasn't too far back. So, amen. Man, I sure wish it rained. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Been a good study. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to enjoy chapter 5, too. And uh, ah, we'll leave it there. Uh, God bless you. Praise the Lord. We appreciate you coming and being here and hope that uh, you're gleaning from it. And uh, you're just a little bit wiser and more knowledgeable than all those other people that didn't come to hear this. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Let's stand, shall we? Amen. Praise the Lord. All hearts clear? Praise the Lord. God bless you. Father, we love you. Thank you this evening for your love and your presence. Thank you for the sufficiencies of your grace. We ask your hand rest upon us now as we, as we leave this sanctuary, but not your presence, Lord, for your covering and your protection, Lord. And Lord, we pray for your protections up over this, Father, up over this heavy rain, Lord, and maybe this stormy weather. And we've already heard that there's been tornadic activity. Lord, I pray your blood cover and blood protection up over your children, up over your church, God, as we yield to you as yielded vessels, Father, in the name, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. God bless you.